Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. Manish Prabhrai is an Indian American investor who was widely influenced by the legendary Warren Buffett's value investing style. He's worth an estimated $100 million and is the founder of Prabhrai Investment Funds. So in this video, I'm going to reveal Manish Prabhrai's thoughts on exactly when to sell a stock because I get this question so, so much. When do I sell a stock? When do I sell? I know when to buy, but when do I sell? So in this video, all will be revealed. I also personally did a video previously on exactly when to sell a stock, my three key reasons to sell a stock and when you should and when you shouldn't. So if you're interested in that and you're curious, check that out in the description below. Be sure to watch this video to the end. There's an incredible investing analogy about a theater which is on fire and I think you guys will find this really powerful. It definitely helped to clarify my mindset with regards to investing and improve my own investing skills. So I think you guys will find it really valuable. If you do appreciate videos like these, then feel free to give this video an early thumbs up that helps out tremendously with the channel. If you're new around here and you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to join the investing family by hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on. Usually on this channel, we focus on investing tips, strategy, and deep dive stock analysis. So we're not really a trading channel, but we focus on deep dive valuation of long-term compounding companies. So with that being said, let's dive in. The question I would ask, and this I think, I think, is, I think you would get a lot out of next sleep's letters, is the question I would ask is, is the business getting better? So I wouldn't really focus so much on the valuation. So my mindset would be that of a founder, that I'm like a founder or a family that owns the business. And uh, I'm not particularly concerned that it's worth 100 and it's trading at 120. That is, I think, an irrelevant data point for me. What I'm concerned about is, what is the quality of the business? And is the business getting better? Now, if the valuation is completely egregious, right? I mean, like, you know, snowflake or something, you know, this thing is trading at 80 times sales or something. Well, that's a different conversation, okay? But I wouldn't be particularly concerned if there was a good business and I think it should be worth 20 times earnings and it's trading at 30 times earnings. I, I don't think the factor there would be that it's, I can find something at, you know, 12 times earnings and do that. So there's tax implications for that in most accounts. I used to be an investor who used to look at intrinsic values, sell and go back and buy something else. I think that if I own a great business, that's the question I want to ask. Is the business getting better? And if the answer is yes, and the pricing is not extremely egregious, I'm just doing nothing. So if, if you made a great investment in Amazon 10 or 15 years ago, and it just grew and grew and grew, and it became like 80, 90% of the portfolio. And you look at Amazon today, is the business getting better? Absolutely. It's getting better by the day. And uh, is it egregiously overvalued? I don't think so. You know, So my answer would be if it was 95% of my portfolio and I owned it for 15 years, I would just do nothing. You know, Jeff is telling me it's day one. It's still day one. So we'll wait till at least day two. When he says it's day two, I'll look at it. Yeah, I think there's a couple of approaches. You know, I think what I notice with someone like Li Lu or even with Nick Sleep is they tend to start these positions small and they don't seem to have a problem with buying as it goes up in price. They don't have a problem paying more. I think, I think Li Lu has spoken that he believes the risk factors go down as you own the business for longer because you know more about it. And, uh, and so even, even though you're paying a higher price, your amount of knowledge is just vastly superior. And the other thing, I, what I found to be true is you really understand a business only after you own it. So it has to be real, you know, to be real money in a portfolio. That's when you really start to understand it. So it could be just fine. I mean, I think when uh, Nick Sleep was running his portfolio, he would have 30 stocks. But, you know, seven or eight stocks would make up 70, 80%. And then there was a farm team on the side, which is, you know, a bunch of small positions, which might move up to, you know, the major leagues at some point or might not. 
So you could take that approach. I haven't taken that approach in my portfolio, but I think that's a valid approach. Market is like a theater. And in the theater, the rule is that every seat has to be occupied. Or in other words, if there is a business and it has 10 million shares outstanding, every one of those shares has to be owned by somebody. There's no shares just sitting there with nobody. So the seats in the theater are fully occupied and they always have to be fully occupied. And now there's a fire in the theater or someone yells fire. So when you hear the word fire, you want to just get up from your seat and go to the exit. You don't want to really ask any questions, whether there's a real fire or a fake fire. You just say, I am out of here. But there's a rule in this theater, which is different from the other theaters, that you can only leave your seat if you find somebody else to take your seat. Because that share has to be held by someone, right? So it's not like you can just leave the theater and the seat will be empty. No. The rule is you can leave the theater, but you need to find somebody outside who will come and sit inside the theater. And so, you know, you go outside the theater and say, listen, it's okay. The movie is great. There's a little bit of fire and there's some smoke, but it, don't really worry about it. It's really probably nothing. But I'm giving you my ticket, which cost me $10. Please, you can have it for 50 cents. Do you want to take it? And the guy says, you know, not really. He says, listen, please take it for 25 cents, okay? So there is a clearing price for the ticket because you can't leave till somebody sits in your seat. And so now we will answer the question on Seritage at some point when I don't own it, okay? Sometime in the future, I will not own it. I would just say that before COVID, Seritage was trading at $35 or $40 a share. And there was suddenly a fire. And instantly the stock went to six to nine dollars a share. So that was the price at which somebody else was willing to buy that seat, me being one of them. Okay, so I hope you guys found that valuable. Please do comment your thoughts below. Which was your favorite investing tip? for success so comment your thoughts below if you did find value in this video feel free to give it a big thumbs up it helps out tremendously with the channel if you haven't subscribed yet feel free to join the investing family for more investing tips strategy and deep dive stock analysis of which i'm investing my own money into so if you're interested in that feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on and if you do want to know in real time exactly which stocks i'm personally buying selling and access my entire portfolio and join a thriving community of the finest investors on the internet then feel free to check out that first link in the description below for the vip membership group with that being said i hope you guys have an incredible day and i'll see you in my next video invest safe